As most of you know, music is a huge part of my life. It has always been that way. I also recognize that it can be a great distraction, particularly when it comes to academics. Given a choice, I'll spend much more time with my music than with my books. And that had been my pattern in high school and in junior college. And so I made the radical decision when I enrolled in Gettysburg College that I would not continue my music. I would give up band and choir for the sake of my studies. Well, that was until a fateful January afternoon. I had just been accepted to the college and the admissions director had set up an appointment with Dr. Freed in the religion department so that he could go over requirements and classes. I went over to Gladfelder Hall and met with Dr. Freed. He gave me a brief orientation to the department and what I would be looking at. He talked about the professors and the classes that were available. And then he asked about my plans for the future. And I said, well, my plan was to pursue ordination and to attend seminary at Gettysburg. He smiled. He said, yeah, many, many years ago, that was my journey too. I can understand it. And then he looked at my transcript. He said, this is quite impressive. He said, I see you played in the band and sang in the choir. And I said, yes, but I'm not, that's as far as I got, because he had picked up the phone. Dr. Zellner, I have a young man here who's interested in the band. He's starting next semester. Do you think you'd have time this afternoon to talk to him for a moment? Sure, I'll send him right down. And then he called Dr. Mr. Matsenko to see if I could get an interview about the choir. I thought a moment about not showing up to either one of those appointments, but something dragged me to Brewer Hall. I blew in with the wind, the door slammed behind me, and there across a darkened auditorium sat a bespeckled gentleman behind a piled desk of scores and books. He heard the door and looked up. He said, you must be Harold. I said, yes. He said, come on in. We sat down and he said, I understand you're interested in the band. I said, well, I'm sort of, I'm not sure I can fit it in with my studies. So what instrument do you play? I said, euphonium. He said, oh, we can find a place for you. And with that, he talked a little bit about the band and what he was planning is a repertoire for the spring. And then he simply began to ask questions about who I was and what I'd like to do and my musical background, my likes, dislikes. He said, I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. And with that, he shook my hand and sent me off to see Mr. Metsenko. Little did I know that that moment would change my life. For I knew in that moment that even though I had never played a note under his baton, there was nothing I was looking more forward to at Gettysburg College than to play for Dr. Z. And he did not disappoint. I returned two weeks later as a student. It was a rough transition. First time away from home. First time with a roommate. I had a crazy roommate. I met him Sunday night. Monday morning, I had a very brief orientation and got thrown into a radically new registration process. I barely escaped with by the skin of my teeth. I went to lunch, sat alone, went back to 
my room again alone. My roommate was off with friends. I wasn't sure I really wanted to be there. Band was at four o'clock, and so I made my way to Brewer Hall. I wandered in, and Dr. Z was waiting for me. He said, we need to get you a horn. And with that, he found a beautiful euphonium, took me into the band room, introduced me to the other euphonium players. He said, I think I want to put you between these two characters. They'll keep you in line. Hopefully, you'll keep them in line. And then before band, he introduced me to the entire band and asked them to make sure that I felt welcome. By the end of the night, I had a whole group of new friends. We ate dinner together. I got a new name. That was when Jake was born. Over the years, he gave me an incredible journey. Not only through the wealth of music that he taught, he had expectations of me that I didn't even have of myself. He made me a squad leader the next semester in marching band, even though I'd never marched a lick. It was pretty ugly to begin with, but he was patient and instructive. And by the end of that semester, we had one of the most spirited squads there was in the band. Band tours took me to places that I never thought I'd be across the country. Because of my involvement in band and later choir, I joined the music fraternity, Phi Mu Alpha, and that led to joining the social Sigma Nu, another expanding circle of friends and relationships. And then came a strange September afternoon. I'd gotten to band early, as was my pattern, and sat down and began to work through my music. Dr. Z was in the band room finishing up after class. He was no longer the band director. He'd stepped down the year before, but still continued to teach. Oh, how I missed him. He said, Jake, how are you doing? And I shared with him a little of what was going on. He said, I got a proposition. Would you like to go to Europe with me this coming summer? I've been asked to lead a band tour, and I really could use a solid baritone. Would you be willing to anchor the euphonium section? Don't answer that. Here's the brochure. Give it some thought. I really want you. Well, the long and short of it was, I found a way to do that tour. He continued to push me. He put me in charge of all the instruments. He put me in charge of being the chaplain of the tour. I just wanted to be incognito for that summer, but no, nah, he wouldn't let that happen. Once again, it took me to places. I saw things and met people that I continue to treasure to this day. It was in that tour that I rediscovered my own visual artistic side. I came back from there and began to carve and calligraphy and paint. That fateful January afternoon, Who would have guessed that it would change my life? But that's exactly how God operates in those simple, strange encounters. Albeit, Dr. Z was quite a remarkable person, but he was just a person. And it was just one meeting. And yet in that encounter, God started me on a journey 
that continues even these days. Who has God used in your life? Where have those encounters been that have changed your path or kept you straight? As you ponder that, remember also that God is using you. Even though we don't know it most of the time, God is using us to change people's lives, to make a difference, to impact them. And so as you head out today, keep your eyes open. Because God just may be planning an encounter for you that will change your life. And just possibly someone else's as well.